Hi, this is Seher from Easy Peasy, and the topic we are going to discuss today is called Optical Properties and Acidic and Basic Nature of Amino Acids. Now, let's start. The first thing we need to understand is the chiral compound. Now, look at this hand. If I put this hand in the mirror and turn it around, we have a lot of different kind of configurations like this. So if a compound have more than one configuration, like a mirror image, then it's called chiral compound. So just like that, the optical properties of amino acids, the thing that we need to understand here is you can see the picture. Uh, this is the L isomer and this is the D isomer of the amino acid. So amino acids are chiral compounds and they can make a mirror images. All the amino acids found in proteins are having the L configuration and D amino acids are found in some antibiotics and in bacterial cell wall. So just like Johnny Bravo love his muscles, so that's why the amino acids present in his muscle have love configuration, not dislike configuration. Okay, bingo. The next thing we need to understand is called acidic and basic properties of amino acids. This is the amino acid in front of you. The amino group attached to the alpha carbon is basically have a big basic nature. And the carboxylic group uh, that is attached to again alpha carbon have the weak acidic nature. So amino acids can act as buffers in aqueous solution. Weak acid means proton acceptors. Weak acid means proton donor. The concentration of protein in aqua solution is expressed as pH, and pH is the anti log of proton. It means more protons are present in the compound, the pH is going to get low from 0 to 1 to 3. That's why the acids are having the, the pH from 0, 1 to 3, and the base have pH from 7, 8, 9, 10. Okay, now before I tell you the understanding of the acidic and basic nature of amino acid, we should understand the difference between a strong acid or base or a weak acid or base. Okay, so that's what we are going to discuss here. Look in the first picture. I take 10 moles of HCl. Now we all know HCl is a really strong acid. It means 10 moles of protons and 10 moles of chloride ions are going to produce there. It means it's going to dissociate 100% there. Okay, so every strong acid is going to dissociate there 100%. That's why the reaction over there is shown by one arrow, not by two arrows there. Okay, now look at the, the picture that is present just beneath it. We are taking 10 moles of acidic acid. And if we are going to put in a solution, three moles of protons, three moles of acetate, and seven moles of acetic acids are present. This is telling us that it's not dissociated completely there. Some molecules did dissociate, but our other molecules are remain intact again. So this kind of situation happens in weak acids and weak base. Here, that's why the reaction is not in one direction only. It is also going back and it is it is creating an equilibrium there, you can say. Now, this acetate is basically called a conjugate base. Henderson Hasselbach equation. Now, when I was in university, I really hate these people. Why? Because at that time, I really didn't understand why these equations are here, why I'm learning maths in, in a chemistry or in a bio biology. That's why I choose biology. I didn't want to choose maths, right? So at that time, these people are on my hit list, you can say. But with the passage of time, when I went into the uh, working environment, then I, I understand the importance of the equation they created because it's really important to make drugs as well. We will understand the application in the end of the slide. But right now, I just want to show you what this equation is. So let's start. To calculate the pH and calculate the concentration, we need to know the dissociation constant of the acid. So dissociation constant of, of the acid is going to represent it by Ka there. 
the a negative is the conjugate base we had earlier proton you, you already know what proton is and at the bottom you have the whole acid in the intact form now we need to understand that ka is directly proportional to proton there it means more the protons more is the value of ka here okay that means strong acid and the pH is going to go lower. So if you know the P of the Ka, then it is called NT log of Ka. If Ka is going up, then pKa is going down. Now, this is the first uh, reaction we had earlier, right? So acetic acid is going to dissociate into proton and acetate there. Now we are putting base in that solution. Okay, we're changing the environment. We're not putting these this acetic acid in a water. We are putting it in a base. Now this base is a really strong base. You already know, right? So if this base is here, the OH that is present in this NaOH is gonna attack the proton that is created by the acetic acid. So if they are creating water here by attacking proton it means if we have five moles of NaOH it's going to force the acetic acid to produce five protons there to make water and then you have five moles of acetate it means without NaOH we have seven moles of acetate and three moles of the ions but right now the base forced the acetic acid to produce more protons here and now the remaining amount is five moles so this is basically one on one ratio right if we can see the ph scale here the ph is going to go down because we add base here and it's increasing the value of the um, ka now this one on one ratio of the solution is called buffer so buffer is a solution that resists in pH following the addition of an acid or a base. Again, we have the same equation in front of us. If I'm adding HCl in the solution, not base right now, HCl, HCl is a strong acid. So it's going to dissociate 100%, right? 100% H proton, 100% chloride protons here. So the acetate that was already present in this in the equation is going to attack the proton created by the HCl. So now the pH that should go drastically down is not going that much down because the acetate is compensating those H protons that is associated by the HCl. Okay. Now, for example, we are we add the strong base again in the solution. What will happen is the OH of the NaOH is going to attack the proton again from the acetate but again the pH is not that drastic change there it's only a little change in the pH now we should know what amount of change is there right so that's why we have this equation and this equation is basically the Henderson Hasselbach equation we have now, for example, if the pKa value of the acetate solution was 4.8, if we add HCl or NaOH, the change from pH will be from 3.8 to 5.8. Now, amino acids in acidic environment. Now, we already know what is the uh, properties of acidic and basic and what the buffer is, right? So right now we are going to discuss how amino acid is going to work in the acidic environment. So right now I'm taking alanine here. I didn't take the fork because I want to show you what bond is going to make here. So in this alanine, I'm going to add HCl again. HCl is a strong acid. We know it's going to dissociate 100% into protons and chloride ions, right? Now, the proton that is present in this aqua solution is now going to attach with the amino group there, and then you will have this kind of configuration. Okay? Now, if we add a base here, like NaOH, like we added before, this NaOH OH group is going to attack, attack the H group of carboxylic there, and this kind of conformation will be formed. Now, keep in mind, we have NH3 here, okay? 
this NaOH can attack this NH3 and take hydrogen or proton ions from here as well. Now, I'm giving these all these compounds a name. So this compound is compound 1. This compound is compound 2. This compound is compound 3. And this was the Ka value we discussed before. Instead of conjugate base, I'm just putting the 3 compound there. I'm changing the name from Ka to K1 because any OH just attacked the OH group here. He didn't attack the amino group that is attached to the alpha carbon. If it's going to attack the amino group there, then we have K2 there. Okay. Now the HA group is going to change with the compound 2 here. Again, the equation is going to change a little bit. Just change the conjugate base with compound 3 and the intact acid with the compound 2. The compound 3 have basically an isoelectric point. And what does that mean is this compound have a plus charge and a negative charge. So a negative is going to cancel the plus charge there. So apparently this molecule doesn't have any charge in the solution. How are we going to detect the pi of this compound? We need to take the average of pKa1 and pKa2 because we have two different uh, pKs. One is made by attacking the uh, carboxylic group and one is made by attacking the amino group there. Now, amino acids that can act either as an acid or a base are defined as an amphoteric and are referred to as ampholytes. Now, let's see the application of uh, this Hasselbach uh, equation. What is the application? A look here. From drug to drug delivery, right? When we are discussing biochemistry, drug is a normal thing for us. So if we're making a drug, drug can be weak acid or it can be a weak base. If it's an acid, it is going to release a proton group and a negative conjugate base there. If it's a base, then it's also going to release a proton, but this time the conjugate base doesn't have any charge on it. So that's why this compound is called weak base. A drug passes through a membrane more readily if it's uncharged. So if it's a weak acid, look in the picture now, the intact form should penetrate the membrane. But if it's in the ions form, this, this compound is not going to pen penetrate the membrane. It is determined by the pH at the site of absorption as well. So for example, like this is a stomach, the uh, pH of this uh, environment is 1.5. And you can see the situation here. If you have a weak base and it's penetrating the uh, membrane, look over here. The blood pH is 7.4 and systole pH is 7. Now look here. That B in the form of conjugate base without charge is penetrating the membrane. But if it has a charge there, like here earlier, it's not going to penetrate the membrane there. So to understand the drug, the composition of drug, because obviously you guys might be working as a lab technician or you as a researcher, you need to understand this concept. The little bit change that is going to made there is going to determine by the Henderson-Hasselbach equation. Henderson-Hasselbach equation is useful in determining how much drug is found on the either side of membrane. So that's why it's really important. Thank you very much. If you like this video, just please give me comments at how you are getting it. Um, if I'm doing something wrong, please tell me. I'll fix it. Thank you very much. Bye-bye.